Yo, what's up, y'all? Hey, howdy. Goddamn. <laughs> How's everybody doing this week, man? Welcome to Talks with Taboo. Welcome to the podcast. Hope y'all are having a great week. Uh, we got a great show for you this week, man. One of my favorite conversations I've had in a while. Um, you know, my guest this week is somebody that I met, and it's actually some of my favorite, actually is my favorite way to meet other artists, you know? Because whenever you're an artist and you meet other artists, there's a lot of times like this underlying thing. Like, you're not meeting somebody just because you think that might be a cool person, you know? You know, a lot of people are just meeting people because they're like, oh, he's hype. Let me meet him. Maybe he'll help my career. Like, maybe I can suck this dude off behind, you know, the stage and he'll give me a shout out on Twitter. And that shit is annoying. I hate that about a lot of... I hate that about the industry at times. But we're not starting off the show with hate. I love the music industry. That's just one thing. Uh, But my guest this week is somebody that actually met and we was vibing, being boys, and we didn't even know each other as artists. And then we're like, oh shit, you're that guy? Oh shit, you're that guy? Word. It's like, honestly, the best way you can meet somebody, man. I, I I really do enjoy meeting people like that, and it doesn't happen often, so it's always nice. Uh, but my guest this week is a very interesting fucking guy, man. He He's a guy that does stuff that me personally and a lot of other people out there fantasize about. You know, this man had a van, a bus actually I, I kept calling it a van in the podcast so I apologize about that but um this man has a bus went and lived out in the woods by a river just doing outdoor shit and that's something I fan about fantasize about daily like how can I have the outdoors but yet be an artist and be somewhere where I can fly and you know be around close to everything but this is a guy that said you know what I'm not about to just dream about it I'm about to go fucking do it and he makes some really dope music, and he's a dope person with a really dope mustache. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jenga. It's the coolest, you know, I'm a man who likes to build, you know, backdrops with my hands, you know, with wood and, <laughs> and a lot of effort, man. I can respect that, man. Yeah, I like the boards on your wall, dude. All customized Jenga boards. Those are fucking dope. Yeah, man. Those are just a few. I'm trying to get like a whole fuck ton of them. Yeah. But it's a start. Do you ever skate your own boards or you just have them just for decorations and for like uh, memorabilia? Just memorabilia. Like, I would, I'd be too afraid to skate one of these because they're kind of expensive to make. So, mm, I can imagine. Probably so. better off just like buying like a deck at a skate shop. Mm, yep. Yep. That's what's up, though. I mean, maybe one day, dude. Maybe one day you'll fucking you'll do the best trick of your life or like win a contest uh, on your own board. Because I've seen you, you know, you're a pretty adamant skateboarder. Dude, I, I love, I've been skating since I was like, I think I had a decision between a scooter and a skateboard in the mall. And mm. I don't know how I chose a skateboard because I wanted that fucking scooter so bad. <laughs> hey, you did the right choice, man. I skated whenever I was little. I think once I really started, I don't want to say little. I skateboarded throughout my teen years. But I think uh, I realized I wasn't, I was I was decent. You know what I'm saying? You say do a kick flip. I say, I got you, fam. Uh, you know, I could do a couple <laughs> things. But other than that, I could I could really pretty much bust my ass. That's probably my best trick I could do, which is bust. My Dude, ass. I swear, the older I get, like every time I like throw myself down a flight of stairs or something, I'm like, shit, dude. I just I feel it more than I used to when I was younger. You know, like I hate being that person. I don't want to say that either. You know, because like yeah, I used to look at that? like older people saying that and be like. Yeah, whatever, dude. Like that's an excuse. But for real, dude. Like now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, fuck, like. If I break my leg, like, I'm going to be out Hell for a yeah. while. Yeah, dude. I like throwing myself down a flight of stairs just to feel something. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that's the only thing I can feel, you know? <laughs> oh, man. I'd be fuck. More power to you, dude. <laughs> Shit. You should skate with me then. Hell yeah, dude. I'd love to skate with you. I can still, I can still fucking do a little bit, man. I, we have a really nice skate park here in New Orleans, uh, Parasite. I don't know if you ever played, uh, skated at it. It's a fucking, it's a really nice skate park. 
Um, and I, I've gone to skate there a couple times. I still got it, man. I still got a little, not it, but I still got a little, little something. I can go up there and board stall. I hit a fifty. I hit a fifty-fifty stall on the on the pool. You know, dude, I gotta come through New Orleans, man. Like I, I went down there. I passed through. I went to that like what's the popular street there that like everybody goes to? Oh, uh, Bourbon. It's where it's where um it's where your integrity goes to die. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude! I went down that street. It was it was it was popping. It was Hell like yeah. it was it was pretty weird because it was like a Wednesday, mm-hmm. and there was nothing happening. But like, still, every bar was popping. It's the most beautiful thing about the city, man. I've gone out on a Monday night and got home at seven a.m. and just because I had like just it was just popping. It just went off. Damn! I remember you I had remember, no plans, but that turned into a pretty big night. Yeah, I remember it was the playoffs. Uh, two years ago, and the Saints had won the playoffs, and I was planning on going home. I was actually tired. I think it was a sun. It was a Sunday or Monday, and we won. And I and literally, I just saw like like parades of people walking down the street, and I was like, I'm not going home tonight. And I just fucking got into the parade. <laughs> I just joined. I just joined, and just wherever it went, bro, I was there. And it, somehow, dude, no, it's- matter, no matter what happens, you start walking with a crowd of people, you always end up on Bourbon Street. I don't know what it is, what type of voodoo, magic, curse they got going on, but they got something. You always end up there at some point if you walk with the crowd. Most definitely. Yeah, we, we, were, just, we were just at this barbecue this weekend, and it was like one of those apartment complexes where the middle of it, they have a pool, and they have like barbecues, and they have like little lounge chairs and stuff. Dude... It's dangerous, man. When you are constantly around a party, like you're, you're you're right next to Bourbon Street, or like you live in an apartment complex like that, where like every morning you look outside and people are swimming, they're grilling, cracking some beers. I mean, that's all you want to do is go down there and hang out with them. Yeah, right. You don't want to work on music. Night, you, dude. you become your environment, you know, like it's, you know, it's like you kind of got to have that like discipline. You like see all that and you're like, your to-do list is out the window. You're like, oh shit, I'll just go party with those guys, you know? True. No, they're very, but it's very good. You got to have like, I, at least for me, it's especially where I'm living now, you know, like Denver is like such a, such a pop in place. Like even during COVID, it's like always parties, like always they got, uh, they got rooftop social distance shows, all this shit, you know, it's, it's like, it's really going on here, mm. but you know, you still got to like make your music, make your art, like make sure you're not getting, too lost in the sauce out there it's fun but you know not to get like too lost in it no i feel you man i feel like i luckily have a good head on my shoulders too uh that was a concern of my parents whenever i was moving here you know it's just because like you know i can be i can be a little wild guy but mostly i'm fucking pretty focused on like what i'm trying to do and stuff like that but yeah if you're trying to cut up this is the place to be that's for damn sure man Dude, even the podcast alone, like, I swear, like, it's, like, doing doing this podcast, like, every, like, how often do you do this? Is, is it a change every week. or? Yeah, every week. Uh, do an episode every single week. I mean, just doing, just doing one podcast a week is just so much work. Like, I couldn't even imagine. Dude, no, it's not. I couldn't even imagine doing that. Just that alone. Sit, I get to sit down with interesting people such as yourself, so it's actually a pretty easy job whenever you got some dope-ass people to talk to, <laughs> you know? well thank you kind sir yeah man and you're very interesting yourself dude fuck well i appreciate you dude listen listen i i I remember the first time you and i met it was actually fucking awesome how we met and it's actually one of my favorite ways to meet other fellow djs is me and you were fucking vibing and talking and joking around in portland and you had no idea i was taboo you had no i had no idea you were Django. you were pat i was mitch and we were just hanging out and then i was about to go on you're like oh shit you're taboo and i was like yeah and you're like oh i'm Django. i'm like oh shit what's up man like it was (laughs) that's one of my favorite ways to meet people where you're friends before you know where you just vibe before anything you know dude you were whooping my ass at kandama man <laughs> i feel like holy you probably, cow like yeah you that probably, was you stick with it you still do it i got one now i got i got dirt monkeys he lives pretty close by he just gave me that like uh, a few weeks ago so i've been practicing a little bit so the next time we meet up i'll have something to fight for <laughs> mm, yeah I, I i haven't done really any kandama and i did a lot of it whenever i was on tour because it was really good for passing time and like all my other friends were doing it but also airports were where it was like the most fun i felt like except for like you mm. get the occasional people who just like thought you're like an autistic guy so they would walk up to you and like you're doing so good and i'd be like uh thanks you know like <laughs> you'd have the occasional one of those you know <laughs> 
<laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, airports are boring as hell, man. I, that's a good tour thing to bring around because, like, you're not wasting your time playing games. I feel like it kind of sharpens your mind a bit, you know. And even having it on, like, the producer desk, like, instead of, like, going to YouTube or, like, going to Instagram, I'll just, like, pick up a Kandama, play with that for a bit, mm. and then go back to producing. You still get that sort of, like fix that you need in your head and then you just go like straight back to making music yeah i just play myself and get like all the fixing i need but, <laughs> <laughs> but dude how the fuck are you doing today man i know we just kind of got right into it without me even asking how it is you are doing dude i'm chilling man weather's getting really good i've just been like i'm at my new apartment now in denver um i moved out of the bus not too long ago because mm. uh I mean, to be real, like living in that thing is like really cool, but it's kind of like glamping, you know, it's not like the, it's not like one of those things you see on HGTV, like the best tiny home with like plumbing and like hot water and all that. You know, I've just been living on a river, uh, kayaking, cooking chicken. I had um, a chicken coop right next to me. I eat fresh eggs in the morning and, oh, that's beautiful, man. you know, so I, every day was just like kind of. I mean, honestly, it was a dream. Like, it was everything I've always wanted to do since I was, like, little. Like, build my own kind of fort thing and then just go hiking, fishing, kayaking, you it's know. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Man. It was fucking awesome, man. The, the, only, the only issue about living in a bus is if you don't have your heating system on point and you live in the Northeast mm. where it gets brutal in the winter, like – so so brutal like last winter i was in there and i had i had like i have my wood stove that i could i got like chop wood put it in there and it'll go all night but it's not really well insulated so you find yourself like you know right up next to the stove and you're like making music or like doing whatever reading a book or whatever the fuck you do in the middle of the woods and just like trying to get through the night so i, I decided maybe we'll get an apartment now <laughs> Dude, no, the van is actually so, like one of the big things I wanted to talk to you. The bus, sorry. The bus was like one of the big things I wanted to talk to you about because, man, I think I probably have a, the urge probably once a month where I go looking at vans and like I watch videos on how to like straight up completely make these vans into homes. And now there's all these companies out there that are making like van homes. You know what I mean? Like just so, like glamping what you said. But, dude, that sounds beautiful, man. I'd love to be out by a river just fishing every day, making music rather rip. Dude, that was that sounds like heaven to me, to be honest. Oh, it is. It is. It, uh, it was pretty, it was pretty great, man. Like I, I, I really had no complaints. I think the only thing is that like after a while you start feeling like you're retired or something like you mm. just, yeah, you're not, you're not really like hanging out with anybody. Like, you know that you have to make music, but you don't feel the grind of it. Like, so I just find myself playing acoustic guitar. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just like focused on like chopping wood or <laughs> writing folk you know. music about fishing on the river or something like that. You got, you got <laughs> dude, mud, like, mud on your boots, dude. Fucking, you miss your old yeah. lady, all those shit, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, for, for like a good week, like this will just give you an idea of like what my weeks were like is for like one week, my goal was just to get past this part of the river in my kayak because it was so hard to kayak upstream. Mm. So because the river is obviously one way. So I'd have to kayak up to go down. And I would just I kayak up to this point that started becoming like pretty rough and just like every day, like going out there and just like I get to like the, th the three quarter mark, like I almost got to the end. The next day I'm tired. So I make it halfway. And then like I wake up the next day. I'm like, I'm going to fucking do this thing. I'm I'm going to get through the, the whole thing today. And then you do it. And it's amazing. But that's all you've been focusing on for one whole week. Isn't it nice though? Like that's like the one thing you're worried about, like the one thing you're thinking of. And also it's, it's keeping you like mentally and physically sharp because you're trying to fucking paddle up river. But like you wake up and like that's your main concern of the day. Like that's that's got to be nice. It, it was nice. It was definitely nice. I mean, I think the only reason I left is because, you know, the winter's just brutal, man. Like it's just, it's so, it's so fucking brutal. And I had like this, uh, I had this like Ford 92 Ranger. Um, I drove that out American to my nice. bus from uh, the West Coast and I, I bought it for 400 bucks. I never got rid of it. I just kept it. 
And, you know, I'd, I'd drive that like, you know, half an hour into town every once in a while, pick up some food, come back, you know, hopefully that holds me over for a week. And then, you know, just keep doing your thing. It's, it, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. But like, if you're, if you're like, if you're trying to, you know, I, I'm so, I'm so like, you know, I, th I think like a lot of us, you know, but I'm, I'm very like driven to make sure that like I can build this like sort of world in my head, like the art, you know, like the music, like building, building things for people to enjoy. And, you know, I think after a while, all you're doing is really enjoying yourself out there. You're just enjoying like the piece of, you know, the state of mind that you're in. And I feel it's a good cleanse. It's a good detox. But, you know, if you're trying to do something, you know, really anything, it's probably not the best place to be in the middle of the woods. <laughs> really? Because, like, whenever I think of, like, my idea of heaven, like, if I would, like, think of heaven and what it might be, I would think me having, like, a nice bus on a river. I think I'd add, like, a bunch of, like, hot women in there th in that mix. But it's just, like, that would be, like, my idea of heaven. <laughs> you know, is, is it, is, and you said it's a lot of, you said it was, like, a lot about, about yourself. Is that what you just said? It's all about yourself when you're out there? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's it's a lot about your yourself, yeah. Getting, is, is getting your mind straight and, you know, not not stressing about stuff and yeah i was, I was wondering is know, there anything, that's, that's oh, really that's really what it becomes is there anything wrong with that though like i feel like man i i feel like i always feel live so much su such a happier life whenever i am just worried about myself i'm not worried about what other people are doing or saying or acting like whenever i'm just focused on myself and doing my things i always feel like i end up living a happier life Well, that's the truth is that you definitely do live a happier life. And, and I, I, I can't say like, honestly, like I'm really happy right now. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think part of it is that I'm stoked on like, you know, having a shower with hot water and like, you know, yeah. a fridge that I could like, you know, keep all my stuff in. It's really nice. Yeah. That sounds nice. But you know, I, I, I think it's because I went to school in Manhattan and it's like one of the craziest cities in the world. And I remember when I was down there, dude, I was just like hustling every day. Like, but just like all these ideas, inspiration, you know, a bus drives by, it has a cool graphic on it. I'm like, oh shit. I like, I like write that down, you know, like, or I like, I hear something or like we go to a random show and, you know, like a lot of my friends are in rock bands. We go down there and I listen to them and I'm like, dude, this is sick. You know, uh, like gives me inspiration for when I go home. So I'm constantly like, being able to develop and think and critique stuff and critique myself. And I feel like competition and that allows me to become a better version of who I am. And, you know, when I, when I'm out, when I'm out on the river, I love it. I really do. But I missed that hustle. And wow. that was something I couldn't get out there. Like, even if I try to wake up in the morning and just be like, all right, today we're going to hustle. Like, I don't know. You just look at the river and you're like, Damn, but that kayak looks so nice. Yeah. Let's just go out there. Let's just go. Let's, let's go and chill. You know, I'll just, I'll, I'll just, I'll stay out there. I'll just wait till the sun goes down. I'll just be in the kayak, just watching the sun go down over the mountains. And wow. It's like, there's nothing like it, man. It's yeah. just, can't be it's it, so man. serene. Yeah. It, it, a lot of times they don't even look real, dude. dude. They don't make that anymore. You know, they don't make that anymore. <laughs> they don't. Yeah. I think, and I think that's part of it is like the so the, the whole, we're all so connected now, right? Like everybody needs to be like on the hottest shit. Like the, you know, everybody needs to be like mo the most up to date they could possibly be, whether they like it or not, you know, you just fall behind so quick now. Mm -hmm. So there's something really nice about just like abandoning all that and just going back to like live in a cabin in the woods. Like, yeah, you know, what, Being are your chickens laying eggs? That's good. Cause you're going to, you're going to eat one of those in the morning. It's going to be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you said you grew up in Manhattan. Like, what? When did you start getting introduced to being outdoors and stuff like that? Because you know, going from Manhattan to living by a river, you know, that's a two complete opposites. You know, that's the yin and the yang right there. So when did you start getting introduced to being in the outdoors? And when did you decide, like, hey, this is like something I kind of want to be around more often. I might want to move out here. Well, I grew up in the Air Force, so my my dad my dad uh, because of his job, you know, he, he was a major. We would uh, we just fly around. We we lived in the UK for a while, uh, lived in Texas for a while, lived in Arizona for a while, mm -hmm. New York, Virginia. So we moved a lot. So by the time I got 
back to New York because we lived there when I was younger. Um, we were an hour north of the city. So we weren't in the sticks, but it was enough that we were pretty close to the Adirondacks. Yeah. So I would I would go up to the Adirondacks all the time. You know, I used to go up to Woodstock all the time. Um, I I love going hiking. You got Bear Mountain up there. You have uh, you have Overlook Mountain. It, you have you have so so many amazing spots. So so New York, I think in itself is is kind of polarizing. You know, you you can go down to the city. You can you could take a a train and be in the city in forty minutes, but then you can drive forty minutes north. You know, at least from where I was and make it a mile. Oh yeah, I mean you'll, dude. Oh yeah, just I make mean it you'll one mile. You drive forty <laughs> minutes, you just make it one mile. <laughs> in the city, yeah, that's what it's like in the city for sure. You you never know. My commute would be like thirty minutes some mornings, and then it would be like two hours some mornings. Like that's just like how the traffic was. So it's wild because everybody goes to the city, you know, and they they say, "Oh, New York City, I want to, I want to go see the lights, I want to go see Times Square, I want to see uh, Brooklyn," and I definitely get that because it's cool. But the Adirondacks are just amazing. Like you got you got some of the most beautiful mountains up there, some of the best hiking. It, it's really unreal. I don't think it compares to the Rockies, you know, because I've been out here in the Rockies now and I'm seeing this, and this is like a whole new world to me. Yeah, but. But it was it was really nice. It was really nice. That's awesome, man. It's awesome that you got to like get introduced to all those different places in a young age, man. It was like a it was kind of like a it was like a culture shock for me a lot whenever I was an adult because I grew up in Mississippi, like in the country, and whenever even just like going to New Orleans, you know, when I'd come here, I'd be like, "What the fuck?" You know what I'm saying? Like traffic <laughs> and shit would be so. You know, we didn't have traffic back home, not like this. We we had traffic on Sundays and it was church traffic. You know what I mean? dang oh yeah church traffic man that's real a lot of people in the cities don't know about that they don't know about that dude they don't even have it here in new orleans which trips me out because it's like it ain't too far it's like a super catholic uh you know catholic town but they ain't you know they ain't got the church traffic i went home uh for easter sunday to go see my mom go to church with them and i got stuck in church traffic and i was like oh i've missed this <laughs> dang yeah that's wild yeah we had we had church we had church traffic down in texas you know, even out here in Denver, this is like a really Christian city from, from what I hear. But, I mean, it's a city. You know, people walk. They take lime scooters, bird scooters. You know, they're not always driving. You can't park anywhere. I don't even know if I'm going to get a car because I'm so, like, right in downtown. I, I feel like I just ride my bike everywhere, you know. Maybe I'll get a motorcycle and drive up into the mountains, but... I could see you wearing a motorcycle. I mean, riding a motorcycle. I could definitely see it, dude. <laughs> like for real, I don't, like for like for real, man. I want a motorcycle. Yeah, you know, I was I was just looking at these like uh, these like hybrids. It's like it's kind of like a dirt bike, but it's also it's good for the the road. So I was thinking maybe like one of those because then you can you could drive you know on the road and then go to a track or something. You know, I, dude. At this point, I'm not I'm not trying to become like motocross, but I think it would be cool just to like take it on a trail. You know, like. Go do anything, whatever you want. Just go up to the top of a mountain, just chill out, just chill out up there, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna get a motorcycle one time. My dad was selling his, and he was selling it for like, I think it was like fifteen hundred bucks for his motorcycle. It was an old one, and I was gonna buy it from him. And he was gonna sell me, sell it, sell it to me, and then he was like, you know what, son. I can't sell you this motorcycle because it was just like, I don't, if I was to wreck on it, he would feel bad. So he didn't sell me the motorcycle. And he thought he was being con, but really, I've never spoken to him ever again. Dad, if you're listening to this, I hope you're fucking <laughs> die. I'm, I'm totally joking. I love that man to death. Um, but yeah, man, I wish he would have sold me that thing. I would love to have a motorcycle, especially like, dude, I see motherfuckers just zooming through traffic. It's It looks awesome, man, especially like Mardi Gras. Like, that shit would be so nice to have. Dude, I, I'm I'm always on the fence about them, you know, because like I, I really want one. Obviously, like, is there? They're, I mean, they're cool, you know. It's it's really easy to get, you know. It's like easy on gas. You can you can get wherever you're going, get through traffic. But uh, but at the same time, you know, even 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 my dad who grew up in an MC, he was he's, he'd he's always a rapper or like for a DJ. He's an MC. no no motorcycle club, kind of like uh... <laughs> my, my dad. My dad was in some gangs. He called them gang, but they actually were. Gangs. <laughs> they they were some hardcore motherfuckers. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, biker gangs are not, you know. Uh, I mean, I mean, do do what you you know do what you will, but you know, at least in my family, you know, growing up, I think my dad always steered me away from like most of his roots. He was just kind of like you know, do be an artist, like just go out there, like 
you know, don't join the Air Force, don't do the MC thing, like just, just like, you know, do, do kind of what you're naturally gifted at, you know, and it just, it just seemed like kind of art was the thing, you know, it wasn't necessarily music when I was younger, it was just kind of like art, I don't know, it was just photography or film or sure, I picked up a guitar, you know, and that, I got a lot of respect for that because I, I think like my dad really did love what he did, but I think I think he loved me enough to understand that I wasn't him and that, you know, it probably, you know, I could follow in his footsteps and that might make him feel good. But I think it made him feel better seeing his son just do something that was like, you know, what he thought himself, you know, as much as himself as he could be. Yeah. So I think he was right, though. I think I'd... I don't think I really liked the Air Force too much if I was in there. <laughs> Man, I think I had a. Th- Although I love the Air Force, I mean, dude, one of the best communities of all time. Like oh, it is, yeah. it's I mean, like so family oriented. It's just so beautiful. I got a lot of family members who have served and family members who are about to serve. And man, I have so much respect for anybody who serves this country. Man, like all, all, all they're fucking heroes, straight up. But um, I think I had a moment one time where i thought about absolutely joining because my dad was a marine and i thought about it for a second and i was like you know what fuck that <laughs> that ain't me man you know dude what? yeah Mar- man marine yeah uh navy seal like if you i mean dude like navy Seal. i always look at the training for those guys like just in that alone i have so much respect for like if you can get through the training alone mad respect to you like if you if you're going to be in that for 30 years like my like my father was i mean dang dude the the amount of the amount of crazy shit that dude's seen like taking helicopter missions picking up you know picking up wounded soldiers dead soldiers bringing them back to uh, to tents and you know just trying to save people's lives it's wild you know you think yeah. about it and, and Kind of makes like any day that I'm having, you know, it might be like a little stressful and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. But you know, my dad was probably like out in the battlefield, like picking up some dude's arm, trying to like save this guy's life. And you know, so this little stressful thing doesn't mean too much now. Yeah. I mean, they were doing all that so we can complain at airports about our flights getting delayed. You know? <laughs> they do all that for, so, so just for us to complain <laughs> about the flight delays. The amount of times I've been so close to tweeting about an airline has has been a lot. Like I've had a, I've had to hold that tweet back a bunch. I just don't want to be the dude fucking complaining. <laughs> yeah, dude, same, bro. I do the same shit, man. I I've been like, uh, I'm not gonna be a little bitch on Twitter today. I'll let, <laughs> you know, I'll let somebody else be a little bitch, but not ah. Uh, no says I. For real, man. For real. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So, do you still have the van? Do you still own it or do you sell it? <clears throat> so, yeah, the bus. So, funny enough, like I was actually thinking van, about bringing that to Denver. I keep on calling it a van. That's my bad, dude. Bus. Oh, dude, it's weird. Everybody calls it a van. I'm, I'm like, dude, this yeah, thing's like a creepy, but especially like, bro, this thing's mustache. a 40 fucking foot school bus. Like, I mean, yeah, and that's confusing in itself because, I mean, the amount of times I've been pulled over in that thing and uh, the troopers are always just like, what? how do you have a regular license? I'm like, oh, I just, you know, I have it registered as a, as an RV, but like I found a loophole with a DMV. They basically gave me a, a, a motor home plate, but it's not a motor home. It's like a 20,000 pound air brake school bus. Mm-hmm. So you're supposed to have a CDL for it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I've gotten away with it so far. I've probably been pulled over like north of 10 times did they do like, that just because of the plate or because there's no way you're speeding in that thing you know what i mean nah it, it, it caps out at like 60 miles an hour they just pulled me over because it's a hippie bus i mean they see that and they're like oh yeah what are we gonna find today they're not gonna find anything and they've definitely searched that thing up and down like they they're they're usually amazed that like some long-haired dude driving a school bus that like they'll search it and not find anything and they're just like i don't I don't get it. You're like a hippie. I'm like, dude, I'm a musician, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I got that thing down. Back, back up. <laughs> like, don't back come, up. don't come. There has no weed. No weed. Hippie has no weed. Hippie has no weed. <laughs> Fuck. So I, I do got it on the river, and I, I was thinking about bringing it out to Denver, you know, because it'd be nice to have it out here, throw some parties over the summer, get some, like, local artists to play. You know, I think it'd be cool, but, I mean... Dang, to be honest, man, that thing takes a team. Like, you gotta, you really, like, just driving A to B is crazy. Like, it breaks down on the road usually once or twice. 
And I usually just got to like wing it, figure it out, you know, like, I mean, just going to Electric Forest, that thing, the alternator went out and I had to get a new alternator. I mean, I'm in the middle of nowhere too. So like I'm driving on the highway, I'm going, I'm going like 60 miles an hour as, as fast as this bus can go. And I got a few homies with me and the sun's going down. So I got my headlights on and the whole thing blacks out engine turns off i'm cruising down the highway going 60 miles an hour in a 20,000 pound bus and i got like barely any control over the steering wheel because everything shut off yeah and i look behind me i'm like holy shit and everybody's looking at me like what happened i'm like oh nothing it's all good it's all good and like i take the next exit i roll i roll try to get to the next exit i can't even make it so i pull over to the side of the road and the sun is just going over the horizon. So now like within 15 minutes, it's pitch black. And I got this black and purple bus that you could barely see on the side of a highway, major highway. So I think there was like four or five of us. So I got everybody to come out of the bus. We all put on our iPhone lights and just kind of kept signaling on the side of the highway to all these tractor trailers, like, yo, go over there, get away from the bus. And, um, yeah, it's just stuff like that, man. You know, it's like that happened. That was the worst one by far. Like that was just bad luck. Do you know how to change an alternator? Is that something that you can just go and do? Yeah, I, I changed the alternator out and um, I, I pulled that thing out. And then by the time I found a um, an auto shop, a diesel, a diesel auto shop to come by with, with that model alternator, I let them put it in and... Uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 a lot of guesswork though. Diesel engines are all different. Um, you never know like like what coolant tube is it? Is the is it the upper coolant tube? Is it the lower coolant tube? Like, does it fucking cooling even matter? Because it's diesel, is it air intake? Like, you, you, it's so confusing. But the engine I know really well is my engine, and that's a DT four sixty six. And uh, a lot a lot of diesel trucks have that engine. Mm. It just took me a few years of just like barely making it to festivals on time trying to fix this thing i'm talking like finding duct tape and like just duct taping something that's leaking and then Hell like yeah. taking a bunch of zip ties you know and just just getting it there i don't care how i do it i just got to get it there that's it and then once the festival ends i'll figure it out i fixed my sister's car this past weekend with the nickel and some duct tape <laughs> sure. oh hell yeah see there you go man like you're you're like authorized to drive the bus now like <laughs> I don't know about driving that thing, but you know, I, I fucking, I might, I might bring some camouflage duct tape and help try to fix it. You know, Whew, man, yeah, it's it's a journey, man. It's it's been a it's been a good four years in that, uh, four five years or something in that thing. Yeah, so you learned a lot. Like, did you just dive in all about that engine, or did, were you uh, do you know shit about cars prior? Because, dude, if my car broke down, I, I wouldn't know what the fuck's going on. If I'm being honest, like I would check my fluids, and that's about it. I I ain't much of a handyman when it comes to vehicles. My dad was a mechanic at one point, but I didn't give a fuck about that. I just wanted to play the drums and <laughs> hit on hot babes. That's literally all I wanted. To do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nah, dude, I knew I knew nothing. I knew nothing about I, nothing about engines. I just knew that I wanted to buy this bus. You know, I was, I was at my girlfriend's house and I, I remember waking up. We had just watched a documentary and I, I woke up the next morning. It was like some life changing documentary. I think it was I Am or it was the Grateful Dead documentary, one, one of the two. And I was just waking up and I was like, you know what? I'm not getting any younger. I'm just going to do this thing. I've had, I had that idea in the back of my head for a while. And so I just looked up you know, the school bus I wanted, like the dream school bus. And it was a DT 466 engine. It was a 40 foot school bus and it was a flat nose front engine, not rear engine. And I didn't even know if that bus existed. And I also wanted an international. So I definitely did my research, but I wasn't sure if that hybrid of a bus existed. So I like typed that in. I was like DT 466 uh, front engine, flat nose, 40 foot school bus. And first result on Google is things like right over the Tappan Zee bridge. Like I'm talking like 15 minutes away from me and they were selling it for like, what was it? Like 3,200 bucks. Oh, I talked the guy down. Yeah, it was crazy. I was like, holy cow. I drove over there. I checked it out. I asked him a few questions. I was like, does the thing turn on? He's like, yeah, it turns on. I was like, all right, cool. Uh, I'll take it. Take, I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, 2,700 bucks. Can you do that? And he's just like, he's like, dude, I don't care. Like he didn't, 
he didn't care at all. He had like a whole yard of school buses. So he's just like, yeah, get this thing out of here, man. I was like, sweet. So I just took this thing. I got my uncle who was, he was a truck driver. So I had him drive it from there to this parking lot I found in Yonkers. And that was, that was it, man. I honestly, like, I wasn't even totally sure if I was like legally allowed to drive this thing. But by the time a bunch of me and friends converted it and got it like all ready for the road. And we were going to do our first festival out in Colorado. I just hit the road, man. I just kind of crossed my fingers. I wasn't sure. Like I was just driving this thing, like hoping that I was going to make it fine. If I got pulled over, you know, ho hoping that like my Google searching, like in, on Reddit, like equated to like reality. Cause like I was reading on Reddit, like, yeah, you could do it. It's all good. So I'm like, man, I hope these people on this forum are right. Yeah, it's like a forty-year-old who lives in a basement who has never owned a van in his or a bus in his entire life, you know. <laughs> Dude, like, no giving kidding, you advice. Man. That's fucking wild, man. That's awesome though. Like, you just went and did it, man. I I feel like that would be something really cool because I I thought about, like I said, there's probably like that once a month thing where I start looking at vans and just, you know, because I think about it like, I don't really need much like i have stuff in my house but like it's all fucking worthless to me at the end of the day the only thing i really need is my mm. computer my guitars my microphones and my cameras like that's literally if i if my house was on fire that's all i would give a shit about you know what i mean so like i thought it'd be really cool like giving a van do the podcast on the road where like i just drive to different cities and just sit down with like people actually face to face and actually do the podcast like that. I feel like that would be a fucking cool idea. And if anybody dude, listening that... steals that idea, I will fucking murder you. All right. <laughs> oh, dude, I think Steve-O, you got, you got some beef with Steve-O now. Man. Oh, he does that. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's... But I dude, I mean, like, I, I think it's, been... I, didn't know I think it's podcast, been a thing, man. you know, like, I, 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 like, I mean, even with, even with the bus, you know, people are like, oh, you're like the pioneer of like the, the renegade stage. I'm like, no, no. Not, definitely not. Like I, I used to be at festivals. I used to see school buses all the time at festivals. That's what, that's kind of what inspired it. I, it's kind of like films, man. Like I, I don't think you're going to reinvent the wheel making a love story. It's, it's like, it's the way that you execute it that really makes your story different from everybody else's. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't think, I don't think hitting the road in a van is like, dude, I, I would, I, I swear, if I live next to you, we would be at Home Depot right now, dude. We'd be buying some wood get and get some up. like old van. I, I'd be converting that thing with you till like four in the morning. Like I, yeah. I live for that. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. I saw the videos of you helping Pat build his uh, half pipe in his garage. Oh, you know, I I've been skating that thing. I wanted to help him build it, but okay, I so actually right. I never I never even got. Yeah, I never even got to helping him build it. Uh, I think he brought some other homie in and they, uh, they finished building that thing. I mean, I was, he told me he was going to build a half pipe in the garage. I was like, no way, dude. That's, that was a real dream of mine since I was like real young. So if, for him to do that was huge. So we, we've been skating that thing like crazy, man. Mm. I used to have a five foot quarter yeah. pipe in my driveway at my parents' house back in the day. Uh, it was fucking awesome. It was, it was a damn good time. Uh, a lot of people no fucking way in your driveway yeah we had a quarter pipe dude i had one i had i had a five foot quarter pipe too mm -hmm. that's killer yeah that's awesome man that's fucking nuts did you did you so you skated that thing like you could yeah. drop in like Hell you do yeah. like you do oh, yeah i skate dude, oh I, dude what yeah, yeah fucking, I, I took skate colorado man hit the skate park with us <laughs> i skated really serious when i was younger man like i you know I, i've skated every single day for probably like seven eight years like straight up like I put a lot of time into it. Then I think I just came to like a crossroad where I was like, all right, which one am I really want to pursue music or skateboarding? And I just, I stuck with the skateboarding. I mean, with the music. <laughs> 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 but you also know, like I was around a lot of people who were like, who had been skating as about as long as I had. And they were a lot better than me at skateboarding, but like they had been doing music as long as I had, but I'd be better at them at music. It was like, I think like that kind of discouraged me a lot of times too, because I'd been skating just as long as these guys, we went all the same places, but they were always better at skating than me. So I was like, you know what? Maybe skating ain't my thing. And it wasn't, I still enjoy it. You know, and I still, I still go and push around the neighborhood and stuff like that. Uh, probably like once a month or something like that. But you know, I'm not out there fucking trying to trade flip up my grandmother. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I always found like the duality of like doing two things has always helped me so much is like, you know, when I was, 
when I was uh, skating, I, I picked up a guitar for the first time. And I think it's because like I can never slow down my brain like ever. Like if, if I don't have something to do, I, I'm I really don't know what to do with myself. Like I'll just stare out the window until like I think of something because I'm just like, damn, like I really ran out of shit. And, you know, I just look at like my I look at like my board over here. I got like a whole board with all this stuff. I got one. But, um, oh, yeah, dude. Whiteboard is where it's at. And I got I got these like huge windows now in this apartment. So I've been using those as like a whiteboard, like beautiful mind status, just like writing with a little squeegee marker. Yeah, I got me a gold board right over there. Oh, yeah, dude. That's where it's at, man. But like, I feel like when you when you have like a goal board, right, you have all these goals that you're like constantly trying to get at. It's kind of nice to have that kind of rebound thing. Like, so, you know, you, you like, you know, you're hustling all day. You're doing what you got to do. You get to your to do list. And then it's kind of like, all right, cool. Now we're going to go skate. Now we're going to go play Kendama, like mm -hmm. whatever that thing is, you know, like I, I always needed that duality. Like always. I feel like it just helps me, you know, and these days it's film, you know, like. Well, and skating, obviously, but like when I'm not making music, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, what's the music video going to be for this song? Or like, you know, what's the what's the music video? Or what, maybe I'll do like a whole music video for like the whole EP and like they'll all like kind of tail together. And, you know, it's it's amazing, man. I feel you, man. That, uh, writing jokes and doing comedy and like podcasting and stuff like that. I think that was like, I think for the longest time I, I had I don't know, man. I feel like uh, doing this podcast and, and stuff has really fucking helped me stay together and, you know, stay focused. Because like, like you said, man, if I, like, my mind was just all, is always going. And if I don't have something to do, I'll, I'll lose my shit and I feel like I'm failing. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm failing at life. For real. <laughs> yeah, it's wild, man. You go, yeah, you go like a week without posting on Instagram. At least I do. You go a week without posting on Instagram. It's like, damn. Like fuck, am I really not doing anything right now? Like, is my is like, it's like my music thing like that like stagnant? You Don't know, you but hate that my I hate that. You know what I mean? I hate that. It's so stupid, but like, but yeah, I mean that kind kind of back to living in the woods. You know, that's kind of why I liked living in the woods because there was just this sort of like bigger picture thing. You know, like it just it just felt like there was something bigger, you know, just, and I, I think that's the truth. So I, I think like sometimes like we get lost in all these little, these like little things that don't really matter too much. Like yeah. it might be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like equate it to busy work, but I bet a lot of it is busy work if we really get down to brass tacks. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, I think, I think what it's done is it, it kind of like, it helped me to uh, see like the important stuff and just sort of run with the important things instead. Like I, I have times where like I'm like, oh fuck, I had I used to have this um, social schedule I'd have to like post on social media with like one of my old managers, and I used to fucking I I, I would hate it because it was like I, mm. it was like a I have to post these things or else I'm not gonna make it as an artist. And it's like, but um, the music I'm making is really good. I'm really proud of it. But there's also this thing. And then after that, I realize it's not nearly as important. But if I go like four days without posting, there's like this thing that's in my head where in reality, it doesn't fucking matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, who gives a shit? You know who, you know why you do it though is because of the goddamn algorithms, Pat. The goddamn algorithms. Just gotta fucking play the game and just dance these days, man. And I'm trying just to- Just dance, man. Yeah, and I know a lot- I mean, there's a lot of musicians doing both, you know, like a lot of musicians becoming influencers and musicians, you know, and if that, uh, if that works for you and you can do that, then, you know, all the power to you. I think that's, that's also great. If you can juggle it for sure. Mm -hmm. Big time. Yeah. I'm sure you don't think about that shit at all while you're in the fucking woods, dude. When you're in the woods. Nope. Dude, so that's, <laughs> that's what I do. Like whenever I get like super stressed or like I have writer's block or if I just got something going on, I mean, I, I fish a lot. I probably fish about two, three times a week, but I like going up to my dad's farm Ooh. up in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And whenever I go there, man, I always go whenever I have like a super rider's block or I just miss my family, but I'll go up there. And then as soon as I get, I'll spend like a week and I'll come home and I can write, I can write again. Cause I'm like refreshed. I've been outside. I've, you know, fucking we're chasing cows late at night howling at the moon you know what i'm saying like random shit where i'm not Ugh. thinking about making music i'm not thinking about posting this or that you know what i mean i'm just thinking about going outside and having a good time or just being out in wilderness and that's one of my favorite things about like hunting and fishing you know what i mean like 
one of my favorite things about hunting and fishing is when you're fishing or hunting, whatever it is, A, you're getting a fucking dope meal out of it. Uh, but B, you're not thinking about anything else but catching that fish. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to hear your problems. You know what I'm saying? I'm not fucking hearing about how I didn't do the dishes this morning. I'm fucking catching that fish, and that's all I'm worried about. You know what I'm saying? Man. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I, I love that you're fishing like three times a week. I say, I wish I could do that. I, I'm just so far. I wish, I mean, if you look out the window, you can see the mountains from here. Oh, yeah. Damn, it, I'm looking out your window right now. Fuck. It's just, <laughs> <dude>. <laughs> It's so far, man. Like if I could, I'd, I'd be fishing all the time too. I, I think that's amazing that you're out there doing that. The, you know, hunting, I, I, tr I tried, I tried hunting when I was in New Zealand because, you know, I, I was listening to a lot of Joe Rogan. You know, I, I love, I love the idea of like, um, I loved like when he would have a hunter on and when he would talk about hunting and, um, I, f I felt this like almost like I felt that I was eating meat so much that it was it only made sense that i got out there and really did the dirty work myself because you know it's easy for me to go get some prepackaged meat and cook it up i feel no connection with that animal i don't know what that animal went through i don't know what like slaughterhouse it was in so when you're out there and you have a gun and it's up to you to take this animal's life you know like that to me was almost something that anybody that eats meat you know I, I mean, at least for myself, I feel it was something that was worth experiencing. You know, like if you're going to be a meat eater, if you're going to go to a, a nice five star restaurant, and eat some some nice steak or whatever, you're getting that meat and you have no connection to it at all. Yep. It's just you just know it looks pretty on your plate and you, you know that you're spending a good amount of money for it. So it was it was experience. It was an experience, man. Like I did that one time and I was like, oh, I don't think I could do this anymore. Yeah. What were you hunting out there? Uh, we were, we, uh, we actually found a deer, which we weren't even hunting for deer. We actually were hunting for goat. Mm. Um, and the farmers out there, they don't like the goats because they, they eat all their, yep. They're, they're invasive. Yep. Oh yeah. They're, they're really invasive. So, so you can just, you could drive. We were up in, we were in the North Island we were driving through all the, it's amazing, man. That's where they, they film the Hobbit and you know, all this crazy stuff. Well, I think on the South Island mostly, but. So we were, we were driving to all this farmland and we just stop at like some random dude's land, knock on their door and say, Hey, like you, you guys got a goat problem. Oh yeah. We got a goat problem. You know, if you got, if you guys want to hunt, go ahead. That's killer. And, They're just like, yeah, come on my land. Cause shit, I've seen, I've seen some people get held at gunpoint for being on their lands hunting dude, but you continue, continue. Oh, they love it out there. Yeah. If you're a hunter and you go to their, their property, you say, Hey, you got a goat problem. I'll go out there. And, uh, so, so yeah, we, we would just. They would open the gate for us. We would go through and we would just spend all day hunting. But the, the issue with like, you know, the, the, at least the North Island in New Zealand, I think some of the South Island too, but uh, I feel like the North Island is a bit more volcanic than the South is so like you have these rolling hills, but you have no bush. Like there is nothing. So, and these goats aren't stupid. You know, they see you like on another hill and they're like, okay, we're going this way. So they'll just, yeah. they'll just duck right under. So you, you got to like go down to the valley up and then if you see them you're most likely shooting from a pretty far distance and as you know as a hunter you know you, you want to you want like a one shot and out type deal because you don't want you know you don't want to be chasing a hurt animal you don't want to put them through that you know also that it you know affects the meat yeah and also it's just like you don't want to be hunting all day just to fucking miss as well yeah oh Usually yeah you're not gonna get that second shot you know what i mean if you miss they're gonna they're going far oh yeah yeah, no, they're they're out. They're out. Mm -hmm. So we got a we got a deer, and I think uh, what was it? it Talia's brother, uh, you know, good friends of mine. Um, they uh, yeah, they they like they prepped it right there to bring it back to the the car, and you know, like they got to like take the skin off, and you know, there, there's a river right there, so they were like, you know, basically like cleaning it in the river. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Man. Was that was like story. a shock to me. I was like, I was watching. That. I was like, shit, I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? I was in my 20s. I must I must have been like my early 20s out there. Nice. Well, at least did. I, I mean, I, I'm just glad that you at least tried it just to see, you know, found out, hey, you know, this isn't for me. Um, you know, so respect for trying it and also like, you know, paying respect to you know, that whole lifestyle. You know what I mean? So, you know, that that's that that was nice of you. I know this past 
Thanksgiving, I go hunting every Thanksgiving over at my dad's. Um, it's just a yearly hunt that I go do. And I had posted a picture with the doe that I had killed. And, you know, I was just like, got, I was, I was on Thanksgiving, I was like, I'm thanks, thankful I got some meat. You know what I mean? Thankful, thankful I can put some meat in the freezer or something like that. Had some people mm-hmm. coming at me like we're pretty upset about it. And I was just like, dude, I know exactly what this deer was eating. I know exactly where it was killed, how it was killed. I cleaned it myself. It's like, and this deer will fucking feed me. And my, dude, my freezer is still full. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had, I got two deer that year, so right. my freezer is just slammed. So it's just like, I think a lot of people. So, just don't so, so you were getting heat for the, you were getting heat for the hunting aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, I can think it's because I like I had posted a picture, but like where I'm from, that's like what you do. You know, you're excited about the hunt, excited about the kill. I was excited. You know what I mean? I was happy. I was going to be able to get some good meat you know what i mean like it you know so but i did i was catching some heat for that it was like man i think a lot of people and that's why i'm 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 happy that you at least went out there and tried it because i feel like a lot of people don't understand the whole thought process behind it i get people who are like you know environmentalists or you know pro life animal life or whatever and that's all great and everything but also it's like you know what happens when the stores go down what happens if you know, I was talking about this with Alex Balash last week on the podcast. Whenever he, with the, whenever they had the freeze in Texas, and I was like, you know, did you go hunt? Because they were like, there was nothing at the grocery store or something like that. But also, it's just like some. I think back of my childhood. You know, some of my favorite memories ever were me hunting with my dad, and a lot of the stuff that I learned being out the woods with them. And I feel like a lot of people just weren't introduced to that or, you know, had the open, I won't say open-minded, but just, you know, at least the curiosity to go and see it for themselves and try it out for them. And so that's why I, I like that you went out there and at least tried it and found out, you know, this ain't for me, but I'm sure you still had a good time while you're out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, th- I think it's just something, you know, again, you know, you, you go to, you know, pick something up at the grocery, you know, if, if you, if you're a meat eater, you know, I, I think it's it's almost like it's it's kind of like something I think is part of the process, you know, and it's happening whether it's, you know, you're, you're doing it or someone else is doing it. So I, I think it just kind of kind of makes sense to pay respect, but also do it in the most respectful way, you know, like and that's part of the hunting culture. I don't think a lot of people understand is that hunting culture is very much about respect. You know, it's like these people you know, aren't aren't going out there like lunatics, just like with ARs, like, you know, shooting up animals, you know, they're, they're going out there to feed their family, you know, and like, especially when you're in the middle of nowhere, I mean, like, and I can relate because I've been living in a, you know, a bus in the middle of the woods for so long. I could see how, yeah, definitely, man. Like if I was a little further out, if I didn't have a store 30 minutes away, that would be my only alternative. You know, that's, that's really all I would have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, a lot of hunting too, and like owning land and is a lot of it is wildlife management. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the deer that are on my dad's farm and property, like he knows they're there. He's constantly like putting out feeders and stuff to keep them there, to grow them, to let them have kids and babies. It's like, but also, you know, there is a lot of, if there is a lot of management because if you don't manage the land, you know, if a lot of times there's disease and famine and then you have deer coming into the city, getting hit by cars, fuck it in the city. Like, so it's just like hunting is a thing that is needed in many, many, many areas for just many reasons as well. Big time. Yeah. And the goat, the, the goat population in New Zealand is a great example. You know, these, these farmers got to make a living and it's an ecosystem, you know, like the ecosystem has to work in a certain way. And if it doesn't, all these farmers are out of luck, you know, their, their farms are, are kaput. Yeah. So it, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. We had a big hog problem back in Mississippi. Like we had food plots, we had food plots and crops and shit and they would straight up destroy everything. Yeah. So hogs, man. Yeah. Those are, (laughs) Some mean songs. Those things, guys are man. vicious. Yeah, some they mean are songs. vicious. There's a video online, and people who are listening to this podcast, they know him. Uh, my stepbrother Jeremy, my dad had caught uh, a, a hog in the pen, and my stepbrother Jeremy got in there with his fucking uh, cut off jeans, boots, and no shirt, and wrestled this fucking hog and t- hog tied it up. Oh. One of the most entertaining things I've ever seen, man. Woo! Yeah, holy cow! I can only imagine, man. Mm-hmm. Dude, so whenever you were living out in the, in the bus, man, uh, whenever you're doing fishing, were you doing a lot of catch and release or was that like some of your, your dinners that evening? Yeah, I, I'd say most of it was catch and release. Um, you know, again, you know, when I, when I first went out there, I, I 
my, my plan was to just get away from, from everything pretty much. And, uh, and just kind of like isolate myself and I felt it'd be good, you know, creatively. And it was good. I, I swear, I felt like I, I stumbled into heaven. Like I could not believe like this place, how lush it was like, and, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if anybody listening is from, from PA, but I'm right. I'm right next to new hope and it, it's like out of a, a storybook or something. I mean, these there's like railroad tracks that go over like little valleys and all the grass is super green. And you got all these like old industrial bridges with like these steel cast iron beams. And it's like, it's just unreal. And it's, it's all these old, like nine, like 1800s, early 1900s buildings that are still there on the river, but they're repurposed now for like thrift stores that sell seventies vintage or like, you know, really nice upscale restaurants for, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like a hippie yeah. population over there, but like it's hippies that like are retired and have money. Kind okay, of so, it's, so it's not like a Soto Sopa or something like that, or like a Sheepa right. town or something like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Like if you live there, you definitely got to have money. So I was walking around like, oh, so like, it is a Soto Sopa. Got you. Got you. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that whole town is, is very much like, yeah, I'd say it's, it's, kind of feels new new money Pro like, i think it's like a lot a whole of like foods probably you know no whole foods okay. that's the only i i think they do a really good job of keeping that culture there gotcha, gotcha. um but you could tell it's a lot of like it's a lot of white collar type people that are older and they finally grew their hair back out and they lived the life that they finally wanted to live since yeah, they, they were like they might have like a chick-fil-a or something that's how you know a place is fancy they got a chick-fil-a man they got a chick-fil-a <laughs> they have wawa wawa oh man i don't know what that is man I had no idea either. I, I discovered Wawa out there, and it, I was I think like, I called it. it's, it's a thing in uh, it's a thing in New Jersey, and I guess Pennsylvania as well. But it's just like sounds it's like, amazing. Sounds like something I might have called my dick when I was younger or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good name. It's catchy. Yeah. You know, they they definitely they got they got them all over the Northeast. If you're out there touring or playing shows, you're you're gonna have a late night in a Wawa, and you're gonna be like, damn, dude. Pat was right. This is spot. Fucking... all right. Bet, bet. I'm, I'm oh yeah, they got the best food, man. They, they make sandwiches for you. If you want a meatball parmesan wedge, they got you. If you want, I don't if you want an Italian is. combo, yeah, they got you covered, man. Hell yeah, I'm gonna have to check it out, dude. New Hampshire uh, clam something, they got it. You've just been all over the damn country, living in places, man. Yeah, dude, it, it's 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 in my blood I, I just gotta keep moving if I, I can't i can't stick around too long you know like i i love it out here in colorado yeah. i really do but um i mean i'd say it's probably a timer i'd say probably another year until i i kind of move on to somewhere else i feel you man what where, where's been your favorite place you reckon dude i i gotta say i think i think like denver's one of my favorite cities i've ever been to and I, I would say, I'd say besides that, I, I mean, I didn't live in Japan, but I was there, I was there long enough to remember vividly going to the airport and thinking to myself, I don't need to go back home. Like I could stay here. And I don't, I don't feel like that all the time, you know? Yeah. Cause you'll be on your way to the airport. I mean, it's, it's just one of those feelings where, you know, you can't put a, you can't really describe it except that it's like this intrinsic thing. It's like this thing inside you you're just like yep this is the spot for me and denver became that immediately every time i came out here for a show it was just like everybody's so nice the bass scene is just popping out here i live a few blocks from um it's a venue called black box yep it's like, it's like right up the street man like it's freaking like smokeland just played like two nights ago i think what, they got space they? wizard there this friday oh yeah space wizard's playing this friday. I see i gotta hit him up that's what i'm talking mm -hmm. about it's like it's crazy, dude. Like, I mean, if you're doing a podcast down here, I mean, you'd be like doing this in person constantly because it's like always people flying in just like nonstop. Yeah. It's not like there, there's a lot of interesting people in New Orleans, but I feel like I've already had them on the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, man, that's killer, dude. I, I think I've had that feeling a couple places I've been. Like, I know like Salt Lake and Charlotte. I think those two places were like I had went there and I was like, I could live here and then i think uh also Kelowna, if i said that right Kelowna, canada 
I thought it was a beautiful place, but I was just like, mm-hmm. you know what? I, I got to stay in America. I don't know if I could live in Canada. It was just beautiful. But uh, yeah, I think I've only had that feeling quite a few times Damn. where I was just like, man, I could I could live here. And I considered both of them many times. So how are you feeling about New Orleans right now? Like, because, I mean, would you ever go back to where you grew up? If I would go back to where I grew up, if I had to take care of like my mom or something like that, uh, you know, if, if that mm. if something like that happened, but um, no, I don't think I would, man. I, I'm I'm I wouldn't I'm I wouldn't have wanted to grow up anywhere else. You know what I mean? Because it's taught me a lot of like life values. Also taught me about grind. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't a si- like you know you were talking about being in a city made you grind, man. I feel like being in the country made me grind. You know, because there wasn't there wasn't these shows going on. There wasn't anything that you could just work and get. So like me, I had to throw my own events. I threw events for like two years. Uh, you know, if I wanted to go connect with somebody, I had to go drive a couple hours just to go shake a hand or something like that. So, you know, I wouldn't want to grow up anywhere oh, else. Man. But uh, no, I don't think I'd, I don't, I definitely wouldn't go back and live there. Uh, can I tell you what, man? I, I love New Orleans and I had to re fall in love with it during COVID because, you know, before COVID, it was like, you know, just a party town. It was a good time. And then whenever that was taken away, I'm just in the humid. It's hot. You know what I'm saying? It's like miserable. It feels like a swamp. I'm like, yo, this place sucks. I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. But honestly, I felt I re fell in love with it because I did a lot of hunting here. I uh, did fishing here. And if I went hunt, wanted to go hunt or fish, I'd go back home or go to my dad's. I never did it here. So like I joined a camp, uh, you know, just started hitting these canals in Lake Pontchartrain, going fishing. And it like made me re fall in love with the city in a different way. Uh, am I going to stay here forever? No, but because I want to get away from the humidity, man. I, I'm sick of the humidity. It ain't humid right now, but it's coming. It's coming. Ooh, man. Anywhere down south, man, you got, yeah, you got some Especially, well, the thing proper is, humidity. Even, even it's, it's, it's even different from Mississippi to Louisiana because Louisiana is more swamp. You know what I mean? So it's like even more humid. I didn't think it could get more humid. And I'm like, oh, it's fucking wrong, man. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, oh. Anywhere in the I mean, especially Florida. You go down to you go down to Florida and Tampa, Miami. Oof, you got long hair. You're not having a good time. Yeah, but at least depending on where you're at, you might get a little bit of a beach breeze over there. You know what I'm speaking? True, true. Yeah, I, I man, I, I used to go to Florida all the time when I was younger. I, I just started really liking it recently. I go down to to Tampa, St. Petersburg. It's really nice around there. But my grandma used to live there, so every time I went there. It was just the same thing. I'd be at her apartment learning how to juggle because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> and and that was that was about it, you know, and just being like super humid all the time. <laughs> yeah. All I could do is juggle and sweat. That's about all there was to do. I'm a good juggler though now, man. I, <laughs> if, I, I will I will juggle the shit. I, I can't I can't do four balls, but I could do three balls. I could do that pretty well. I love that that's a uh I love that that's like a Wook toy now. You know what I'm saying? Like a festival, you'll see people juggling. I love that that up. left the circus and came into, you know, the rave culture. Like that's that's one thing that I love watch. Straight up, I went to a festival one time with my buddy, uh, as a group of us. His name was Garrett. He he was with us. We lost him. I won't say we lost him. He just went out. He did his own fucking thing. He was like, "Fuck y'all, I'm gone." And we met him that night. It's been probably like 15 hours since we've seen the motherfucker he has a whole new outfit on like like his hair's done differently and he's juggling he didn't know how to juggle prior but he saw oh, yeah. he, he met some jugglers and he just hung out with them all day and all they did was fucking juggle i'm like that's a beautiful that's i love that shit about festivals man you just go out and find a new hobby and friends and you see your people you're like look what i can do now man and it's like i miss that shit man miss that shit that that's the best thing you know that's the best thing I love about festivals in general. You know, like I, I, I think back, I think back to a con fest a lot actually, because you know it, it was almost like this full circle thing when I was younger, getting into music. I, I didn't want to play clubs. Like I never, I never wanted to be in a club. I wanted to be like, I wanted this shit to be like fucking Woodstock. I wanted us all to be out in the middle of the field with the sun out. And we're all chilling. We're talking. We're having a good time, dude. You can go under. You could go climb that tree if you want. You can go juggle over there. You, get you can naked. do whatever you want. <laughs> you get naked and run around. You know, like there's like this <laughs> feeling of you know. You, you could just it's it's liberation, man. You know, and that that's something about festivals that I fell in love with. And so it was never about like 
you know, clubs are also fun because, you know, there's so many, it's such a controlled environment, you know, with the lighting and the LED screen, you do so many cool things in there, but there's something like amazing about being all together and watching the sun go down or like going down to the waterfalls and like, you know, like, especially in Arkansas, specifically at Wakan, you know, on, on that mountain, that was like just nice blue water and you're chilling with your friends you're cooking up some food at your campsite like life doesn't get much better than that that's yeah. that's like to me that's like that's that's it that's kind of what it's all about yeah no nah, man that that place is magical uh, that mountain is magical uh that was like wakan was like a big full circle for me too man because my first camping festival i ever went to was wakarusa on that same mountain and i'm talking about i remember that that mountain that weekend i had at wakarusa changed my whole life and i like you know i i felt like i had found fuck a lot about myself that weekend but it's just like uh and then it was full circle man i remember i remember at wakan fest i was doing stand-up and just wa looking over and you're just sitting on top of the bus <laughs> you're just sitting on top of the bus just giggling dude you killed that <laughs> That was a good time. You killed that. I, I don't think I ever saw you do stand-up. I, I was so I was so intrigued. I was just like, dude, Mitch is gonna do some stand-up. So I made sure I was there, man. Like I was so pumped on that. I remember just like dying. I I just loved how you pushed it. Like, you know, you really, you really like you're true to yourself and you know you say what you want to say and it, and it really that's that's the that's the stuff that's great. You know, when you got somebody up there that's afraid to going here and poke this and do that, you know, that's when you, I mean, the audience starts feeling kind of like you do, which yeah. is they start feeling a little like, Oh, this guy doesn't really want to like push it too hard, you know? Yeah. That was, that was nice to see like everybody just like not giving a fuck. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was exactly what it was. That was the vibe. It's like, I don't give a fuck. This is funny. Y'all know it's funny too. And you can laugh about it here, but <laughs> you know, like so that was, that was fun, man. Yeah, I just remember looking over at one point. You were just sitting over there just giggling. It was, you just had your bus right there, the best spot. You had the best spot in the fucking festival, dude. All night, you could just sit up there and hang out. Dude, I felt blessed about that whole thing, man. That was that was really cool, you know, because I've been doing the bus thing for, for a very long time, and it's been some pretty pretty grimy situation you know, under a bus. So I took it up to Canada. We just partied in the street. You know, I just turned this thing on, get sound ornest tickets, cops come by, you know, trying try to kick you out, all this stuff. Canadian police are really nice, by the way. They're oh, just yeah. like- Oh dude, I, I, mean, they, I, had, I had a run into them one time, but yeah, I'll, t I'll tell it after you're done talking though. <laughs> oh yeah, they, they we, we brought that, we brought that thing up to Canada. We were in Montreal um, and, uh, we were doing some some parties in the warehouse district and I, I brought it to the warehouse district, got a generator, did the whole thing. And, you know, we, we were we were going till the sun came up. And I think at that point, the cops had already come by three times and they were like, hey, you guys got to turn it down. And, you know, I, I was always respectful. I was like, yeah, we're, we're going to turn it down for sure. Like, you know, so, sorry about that. Uh, I'm used to NYPD, so I, like these guys coming coming through and just being like really hey, nice about it. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out! Yeah, the NYPD, like get the oh, fuck yeah. out of here. There would be there would be no debate. Like you, they, they they there's just no debate. I mean, these guys are definitely gonna kick you out. But hey, Canadian you police walk over there with your hands and start your car with your mouth and get the fuck out of here, huh? <laughs> you know some shit like that. <laughs> You know, that's NYPD. Except for the night we had it outside Webster. The night that we had it outside Webster Hall. All the NYPD knew that that was the last night, so like they let us blast music till. That's what's up. I think I think two or three in the morning. Yeah, was, that's when Skrillex closed it out. It was, dude. It was like, it was, a, it was like the same way it was when Kanye West came to Webster Hall. That fucking street was like packed, like you couldn't move. But uh, but yeah, man. I mean, those, those Canadian police they came they came by. I think it was like seven. I think it was like seven in the morning. But this time it was like the fourth call they had, so they came. They they came strapped, dude. They had like four cop cars. They all walked towards me in a flying V. Like they had one guy at the front of it. And this one guy had like a little pad with him. And he like walks up and he's just like, I am so sorry. <laughs> and he hands and he hands me, I swear, I'm not even making this up. He hands me the ticket like like on a on a like a on a on a little like clipboard. And I looked at it and it was a it was a sound ordinance ticket. And I was like, no, don't apologize. Like, this is 
this is great. Like I will easily, I'll pay this. It was like 65 bucks or so. I was like, I don't know. It was like 120 or something. Wow. It wasn't, it wasn't crazy. I was just like, no, like I'm an asshole. Like, sorry. Like you guys had to come back four times. Like I'll gladly pay this. And then, and then, and then they asked me if I wanted to go to McDonald's and they, they literally opened the door to their, their cop car to go to McDonald's. And I, I was like, Oh no, 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 I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I couldn't tell because you know, like, you're, you're I'm like, are they like tricking me right now? Like, dude, do you think they're going to fucking put you in there, take you to jail, then fucking beat your ass, dude? Like, <laughs> It was, they were just like so nice. I was like, wow, you guys, I was like, you are seriously the best, but thank you. I'm good. They're like, you look really hungry. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> That's killer. Yeah, I know. I've had two run in with the, with the Canadian police. Actually, one of them was technically like the TSA, but like I had flown, flown in like this small plate. I think it was like Victoria or something like that. And they hurt. I think they pulled me aside to search my bags because of my accent. I think they thought I was faking it or something like that. <laughs> and then so they searched my bag and everything is fine. And then they apologize about searching my bag. I'm like, why are you apologizing about doing your fucking job? Anyway, and then uh, there's another time. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There was another time I was in, uh, I think it was Montreal, actually, or Quebec. One of those places, right by it. Um, I was leaving the festival. uh getting a ride at the hotel and they were basically pulling over anybody that was on that road and they pulled us over and they come over to my side. I'm actually kind of fucking pissed drunk at this point. I'm not going to lie. And, uh, <laughs> they come up to me and I said, me no Espanol French, eh? And I hand them my Mississippi ID. <laughs> like, Fuck this guy. <laughs> They're speaking in French. My drunk guy said, me no Espanol French, eh? <laughs> Holy shit. And they were cool, man. They, were, they, they actually, uh, they were cool. Oh, I bet. I bet that. Yeah, that was that was a culture shock. That was. A, I, but the border patrol, totally different story. Mm, they, totally different they story. Those the, guys. They fell the tear the bus apart. Oh man, yeah. You know what? It's funny because I actually got a GoPro video because I, I put I put a GoPro um, on my dashboard, and uh, when they were searching the bus, I was just like wait, you guys are going to come on here and search this thing? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, all right. So I just flipped the camera around and face inside the bus. And they walked on. They did the whole search. <clears throat> and they uh, they look up at the camera. And I, the, the video is hysterical because they're looking up at the GoPro. And they're like, what is that thing? Because like the, the, the light is blinking. And they see it. And they're like, oh, shit. And then they just like walk out of the bus. I was like, guys, you didn't even search the bus. They just got like sketched out about the, mm. the GoPro. So everybody listening to this podcast right now, if you ever want to sneak anything into the into Can- Canada... <laughs> You know, you just fucking put a camera up. Canadian. Yeah, Canadians are scared of cameras. That's a fact. Um, oh yeah, no, they, they they mean business, man. I mean, they they actually when I was going in, I was with my buddy Spencer, and Spencer, he just likes to talk sometimes. Like he'll just, you know, like he'll just say he'll say stuff that maybe he didn't really mean, or like he kind of forgets who he's talking to because he's a very very friendly guy. And uh, they said, so yeah, so what are you guys doing in Canada? And he's like, oh. I'm I'm like living here with a friend, you know, she's from college. And I the moment he said that, I was like, what? What do you mean? Because he was saying, he's like, yeah, I want to live in Canada eventually. So now we're driving through the border and he just says this to a border officer. And the border officer is like, you can't live in Canada. You're an American. Yeah. And so now I pull the bus over. Now they're like, oh, we're definitely searching this fucking thing. And like Spencer's in there trying to like talk them down. Like, no, 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 I didn't really mean that. Like, I just meant that like, that's just like, I don't know what the fuck he said to get out of that. But they were not happy. They didn't want to You can't stay here, bro. We don't want you fucking Americans here, dude. Get the hell out of here. (laughs) Dude, no kidding. (laughs) Well, look, man, this has been fucking awesome uh, having you on the show, man. I've really enjoyed this conversation just to wrap things up though um you know whenever you're done with denver are you going to go back to living in the van and also now that festivals and shit are coming back everything's starting to come back festivals are announced and shows are announced and states are opening up people are getting vaccinated you know what i'm speaking uh are you going to take the van back on the road or can we expect some more jenga take jenga the jenga bus van uh i almost said van at the end of the bus <laughs> some jenga bus takeovers or is that is that in the plans is anything like that happening well, I don't know if I'm ever going to go back to live in the bus. We'll see. You know, maybe maybe if I, like, convert it into, like, a full functioning, you know, that's still been a dream of mine in the back of my head. And I think when I get the time, I'm going to go out there and do it right, do the plumbing, you know, get some hot water in there and, uh, you know, maybe buy some property, put it on there. But uh, as far as takeovers, 
I don't know. I just put a little poll on my Instagram just recently, and I I just asked everybody, you know, who would want to see this thing out in Denver and <clears throat> got a really good response on it. So might possibly do like a, a crowdfunding thing because it needs to get repaired. It has about four, 4K worth in damage. I'm surprised it got back from Wakan. That was the last festival it was at <clears throat> and international. They told me when I was leaving after the checkup, well, I wasn't even supposed to leave. I mean, because they told me like straight up, they said, you're not going to make it to Arkansas. And I said, well, well, I'm going. So how am I going to get there? And they said, well, we're going to pray for you. And then also That's nice. pack a lot of oil. That's nice. So, yeah, people praying for you. That's nice. Oh, yeah. I think they're pray praying for the bus. I don't know if they're praying for me. <laughs> oh, man. Well, at least they're at least it's towards your direction. OK, it's, it's in my direction. I got the, I got that spiritual energy. Yeah. <laughs> I got it out there. I got it back. And I really, I, I'm surprised I did because I had to pull over like every, every like half hour to an hour, re replace the coolant, put some water in there, put the oil in. So it's, it's a, it's a trek. So we'll, we'll see, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to see, I got a good reaction and I was talking to some people out in Denver. So maybe if the time is right. Well, we I mean, if, if, if Twitter says it, then you know it's true. So, you know. No That's matter. true, man. Yeah. yeah, you got to come out for that one. Oh, you got to. I'd love you'll... to. I'd absolutely mm. love to. It'd be a damn good time. Oh. We'll do it up, man. Yeah, it'll it'll be a time and a half. And that'll probably be the last run for it. So who knows? I don't know. Maybe we'll keep it going. Depends. Well, especially, it's definitely going to be the last run with it with that attitude, okay? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think that people are keeping it going, honestly. Like, that's that's really what it was, you know? Like, everybody just loving to see that thing. That's what... I mean, that's the only reason why I make music and do all this stuff. So if people like it, let's keep it going, man. That's hype. Hold up. Was that was that fucking van, uh, bus ever at a festival in Nashville <laughs> called Liftoff Fest? Nope, okay. never. Okay. The furthest south I went, close close to there was uh, was Kansas City. That was that we did. Uh, I keep saying we. It was just like me and homies. But um, yeah, which Kansas is, City we a, did. Which uh, is a we? Yeah, but okay. Dance Festopia, yeah. I mean, you know, when you're when you're when you're the only one fixing the engine every time it breaks down, it feels it's a. Just, it's just you then. That's for sure. <laughs> it's, just, it's a solo mission. Yeah, I got the homies in the back just chilling, looking out the window. Yeah, I just got the. Whole but uh, back, dude. so we'll see. Time will tell. But hell yeah, super stoked on it. Regardless. Well, sick man. Well, look, man. I can't. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today, man. I know you and I. We always had a good time every time we were around each other, and this conversation's been a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Mitch, same here, brother. Looking forward to seeing you, man. Let's hit a festival together this summer. I'd love to, man. It sounds like a good time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, brother. Well, look, man, you have yourself a good fucking week, dude. I will talk to you soon. Hell, yeah. Same to you, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. And that was Mr. Jenga, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed this episode, dude. Really, that whole episode was just me and him bobbing. That's really all it was. We were just vibing, chilling. Another day of being friends. I like that guy a lot. Like I, I think if me and him lived close enough, we would actually be good friends. I think we'd hang out quite often. I like that guy. I hope y'all like that guy too. I hope y'all liked this episode. And if you didn't, go fuck yourself. I'm joking. Uh, but you know, that's honestly like the worst thing you can tell someone to do: go fuck themselves. Like I love fucking myself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I can't sleep unless I fuck myself. Anyway, um, I hope y'all have a good week, man. Be good to one another. Or, or don't, dude. Be fucking whatever you want to be. Don't let some fucking DJ with the microphone tell you what you should do with your week or your life. Do you. Or don't. Do someone else. Or yourself, if you're into that. <laughs> I love y'all. Bye.